Hello, I'm Jim Hellman, CTO at Movie Labs. Today I'm going to talk about software defined workflows. At Movie Labs, we've been working with our member studios to define a direction for the future of production workflows. We think there are real opportunities as workflows move to the cloud to make them better, more secure, and more flexible. And we're looking forward to working with the industry to get us all there. First, a quick bit of background. We started in August 2019 publishing a manifesto based on 10 principles for building the future of production. Later that year, we followed up with a vision for securing these new workflows. And last fall, we put together a paper on software-defined workflows that lays out the opportunity for improving workflows as we redesign them for the cloud. A key part of that is the need for common terminology, data models, and interfaces, which I'll talk about today. By the way, they're all great reads, so download the white papers from our website. So what are we aiming for with software-defined workflows? Well, to us, a great workflow is one where first everyone clearly understands what they need to do. When they sit down to do their work, the tools and environment for their work are all set up. They have secure access to all of the assets that they need, organized the way that they want them. And when they're done, it's a one button publish to the next step in the chain. So the turnovers between tasks are seamless. And if something changes, which it always does, the workflow is flexible and can be reconfigured without a major effort. When we talk about software-defined workflows, we're basically talking about enabling these things with software that better supports collaboration and that uses automation to remove obstacles and mundane, manual, and repetitive tasks. So the creative teams can be more effective. You may have heard some buzz about ontologies. What are they? Well, they're one of the important underpinnings for helping software support workflows. Now, to develop reusable software that can manage workflows and communications and can orchestrate storage and security, it's really helpful if the software can understand, have representations of the natures of the workflows. What are the tasks? Who performs each task? What assets does each of those tasks produce and consume? How are the assets related to one another? So we start with three basic categories of things that you might find in a workflow diagram. Tasks, assets, and participants, which are the facilities and people who do the work. And perhaps most important, systems need to be able to track work, approvals, and assignments based upon the way that that work is broken down and managed, which is frequently by things like scene, shot, sequence, reel, character, and so on. We call those contexts. Then you have the glue that connects everything together, the relationships, effectively the arrows that connect them. I have a task. What are the assets that are inputs and outputs? Uh, I have a plate and a shot. Which, of, which plates are in that shot? So we've settled on these five areas to develop ontologies. There's also another dimension to this that's important. Every part of production has its own set of elements. Some are common across all stages of production, things like scene, shot, character, things that come from script. Uh, some are very specific to a particular stage, like 3D VFX models. And this is why we talk about multiple connected ontologies rather than a single all-encompassing one. So let's jump into an example workflow and see how some of this might work. Here's a diagram of a simplified workflow showing a few of the possible interactions and exchanges between editorial, finishing, VFX, and sound. Uh, by the way, the diagrams I'm showing here use a draft of a visual language that we're developing at Movie Labs for depicting workflows. On the left, we start with capture and daily, which fees editorial and then OCFs going directly to a finishing post facility for storage. Captured sound is sent to a sound post facility. So now, say when editorial completes a scene or shot that's ready for VFX to work on, let's look at what happens, the traditional VFX pull. As with many things in creative workflows, it's all triggered by one or more approvals. After the approval, someone in editorial assembles the VFX pull request and sends it to the finishing house. The VFX house gets a notification and the shot list along with reference video and other materials. 
The VFX house also receives the plates for the shot from the finishing facility. When VFX has something ready to share back to editorial, they may send back videos or other work in progress, and editorial will respond with comments and changes. After a lot of back and forth, eventually the shot is completed, and VFX sends the completed plates to finishing. Now let's, let's look at sound. Interestingly, you'll see many of the same interaction patterns there. Again, work is triggered by approvals in editorial, say when a reel has been completed. That triggers a somewhat analogous set of deliverables from editorial to sound. Again, we have reference video, uh, but here we have an AAF rather than a shot list. And again, we have the iteration. Sound does its work, sharing work in progress back to editorial, getting comments and changes back, and after lots of back and forth, the final mixed soundtracks are approved, and sound sends them to finishing for storage and conform. When I first saw this, my reaction was, wow, it's complicated. In some ways, it's like a factory. You have some set of basic processes, things like editing, mixing, VFX, that produce each time the same types of things, sound and video, uh, and they do it repeatedly for each scene, shot, and sequence. But this is not your Henry Ford assembly line. There's lots of back and forth. There can be hundreds of editorial turnovers for a feature film. While the movie analogs of that fender, the plates, the sound stems, uh, still have their screws and assembly points, here, each part has to be reworked in a way that best tells and supports the story. It's not just the task of technically bolting things together. So, if we really want to make lives better for the storytellers, it's all about improving the collaboration and communication that enables that iteration and refinement of each of those parts and their assembly then into, into the final product. Another observation was that, man, there's a lot of manual work going on here. And also, what, what's with all that copying and movement of assets? So, what can we do to make this work, this iterative and collaborative work, flow better? Well, first of all, many of the more mundane and repetitive processes should be automated. Each time something is creatively approved for the next stage in creation, everything that is not an essentially manual or creative task should be automated. It goes back to what I said earlier, that in an ideal workflow, when someone sits down to do their work, everything they need should be there, organized for them and ready for them to get right down to work. So if the next thing is a review, whatever materials are needed for that review should be generated, packaged together, say a video needs to be encoded, made available on a streaming platform, other artifacts, and then a notification is sent to the reviewer when everything is ready for them to look at. Or, if the next thing is a VFX house starting work on a shot after editorial has approved the poll, from the point of that approval on, everything should be automated. The preparation of all the materials and editorial and finishing, the transfer of them to VFX, their ingestion and preparation for review at the VFX house to get to the next stage of work assignment or work within the facility. The next big question is whether we really need all this movement and copying of assets. In our 2030 vision, the ideal is that the assets don't move, but rather that the applications, including VFX and sound, would come to the assets. In this model, you get quite a different picture. Rather than assets being transferred, everything is driven around central storage and compute in the cloud. In this world, you can imagine creative teams anywhere in the world bringing their talents to bear because they no longer need any infrastructure. Here, for example, we put a VFX workstation in the cloud. Of course, facilities and infrastructure aren't going away. But you could at least imagine a world in which you use a lot less storage in some of those facilities, because they only need to pull down from the cloud what they actually need for their own work. Now, when the assets don't move, security changes also. In traditional workflows that involve copying of assets across departments or facility, often the granting of workers' access to those assets is a side effect of that copying to a new facility or file server. 
But in the 2030 model, propagation of assets to the next stage in a workflow after an approval is simply a publish operation. That publish operation has two key aspects. First, it's a notification to downstream workers in automated process that something is ready for them. But the other key aspect is that those workers or automated processes need access to those assets for their task. This means that the workflow needs to drive the access control policies in the security system based upon approvals and work assignments in the software-defined workflow. In all of the above, we have a lot of events that happen, whether it's an approval, the transfer of a file, or the completion of a rendering. Workflows are inherently driven by these events. People need to be notified when something is ready for them to review or work on, or an automated process needs to terraform an instance of a creative tool in the cloud and populate the workspace. In legacy workflows, where files were always being copied and transferred, you could hang some of this off of things like folder watches. But in our ideal cloud vision, the assets stay in one place, in the cloud, and the applications come to them. So you need something more. This is a place where a messaging system comes in. A common messaging system can support this type of communication and automation, not just within a facility or a department, but between them and not just point-to-point -point integrations between pairs of applications, but across many. Now, in a workflow, someone who finishes something or approves something doesn't necessarily know exactly who or what needs to do the next thing. That is, who or what needs to get notified. Now, under these circumstances, delivering a message would be challenging for something like the U.S. mail. But for a messaging system with smart message routing, the key here is that the sender of the message doesn't need to know all of the recipients. Routing can be based upon subscriptions, and those subscriptions can be tied to things like context, like the shot, which may be assigned to a particular post house, or the rigging of a character that's assigned to an individual worker. And so we have this model where these ontological concepts of context become very important to the automation because they're what's needed in order to properly route notifications and trigger automations, emails, whatever. Now, one of the other promises of software-defined workflows is better information about what's happening in the workflow. You'd like to have dashboards that can provide views of the status of tasks within or across your workflows. That shared messaging bus we just talked about is, is actually something that helps enable this, uh, since it makes it easier to log and track approvals and other events. But getting the data for dashboards is just one part. You also want them to be viewable at different levels of detail based upon the viewer's needs. For example, individual worker tasks versus department level work, uh, scene level versus shot level assignments, which means you need to have a data model for the structure of the tasks, assets, and their dependencies, which comes back again to our ontology for describing those tasks, assets, participants, and their relationships. You also want a dashboard to be instantly understandable visually. So again, we come back now to the visual language that I mentioned earlier, where if everyone has a common understanding of workflow diagrams and those are visible in the dashboard, things should be much more readily apprehensible. And when workflow components become more interoperable, you could even imagine being able to visually assemble your, work, your software-defined workflow in something that looks like a dashboard. We already see some tools for this in the market for visually designing approvals uh, or uh, workspace terraforming when a project is, uh, is, is created. I mentioned that at Movie Labs we have work going on in visual language and security. But let me conclude here with other work that's directly related to software-defined workflows, like this ontology work. Our approach on these vocabularies and ontologies is to take the work in small pieces that we can quickly develop and make available to the industry. Uh, we have work underway on things like tasks, assets, participants, relationships, and contexts. Uh, that work, we're focusing it to support the needs of our visual language, as well as some of the things like message routing that I talked about. We're also doing some targeted ontological work, for example, on sound asset terminology uh, to support a sound file naming specification, as well as some camera metadata definitions and mappings that 
can support ingestion of simple metadata from camera files so that it can be consistently referenced and searched in databases. If you're interested, you can download our white papers from the website. And when we publish something, we usually announce it on LinkedIn. So if you want to get notified of new developments, you can follow us there. So thank you, and we look forward to collaborating and working to this new future.